Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at a CPA exam simulation that deals with a partnership distribution. This simulation is very popular with exam candidate that I received many requests about the simulation. Therefore, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and explain it in details. Before I start, I would like to remind you that if you're a CPA candidate taking the CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website farhatlectures.com. I do not replace your Becker, Roger, Glyme, Wiley, or any other CPA course. I can be a useful addition. I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA exam score. I explain the material a little bit more in details. I explain the material as if you are still a college student. That's the difference between what I do and a CPA review course. And here's what you need to do. To try it, you have to subscribe for a month. Check me out. See if you like it. You, you keep it, otherwise you cancel. The maximum loss is $30. The gain is you could potentially pass the exam. I have helped hundreds, if not thousands of students to pass. Check out my LinkedIn account, check out my LinkedIn recommendation, or check out my website to see other students that used my system. And if not for anything, check out my website to find out how well is your university doing on the CPA exam. I do have those scores. Also, I do have other accounting, finance, and tax courses. Please like this recording, share it, connect with me on Instagram and Facebook. So what I'm going to do with this simulation, I'm going to switch to Excel because it's easier, not easier. It's going to be better for you to use Excel. And this way I can show you how to compute the figures, the partnership gain or loss, each partner's gains, losses, basis in the property distributed and basis in the partnership interest. Let's go ahead and switch to the Excel sheet. So what are we looking for here? Well, we have three individuals, Adam, Lily, and Avi. Those are the three individuals that we are, the, the three partners, and they are equal partners. And this is their pre-distribution basis on the partnership, 11,500, 17,500, and 12,500. And we distributed asset. Adam, we gave them cash. Uh, for Lily, we gave Lily uh, a land. We have the fair market value and the basis. And we gave Avi inventory, fair market value, and basis. This is what we gave them. Also, there was a debt secured by the land, and Lily's going to take over this debt. So th this asset here has a debt, and Lily's going to take over the debt in, in the, when, they, when she takes the land. So we have a few questions to answer, and the first question to answer is, what is the ALA partnership gain or loss recognized? Now, Starting from this question, you, you might think simulations are difficult. Well, this is not a difficult thing. If you know the rules, this is going to take you two seconds to complete and make sure you complete. What does that mean? It's zero. They don't recognize a gain or a loss. So that's basically you just answer part of the simulation and it took you practically not no time, but it, take, it took you 10 seconds as long as you know the rules. Now, if you don't know the rules for this, if you don't know that you don't recognize a gain, uh, a gain loss on this, then you're going to be stuck here. You're going to spend some time here. And obviously, if you don't know the rules here, you're going to be find hard time ca computing the gain and losses for Adam, Lily, and Avi. So it's very important that you understand this distribution. Well, obviously, we don't have to worry about the post-distribution basis in the partnership interest because this is for the partnership itself. Now we need to talk about Adam, okay? First, what did Adam get? Well, Adam received, they, we gave Adam $10,000 in cash. That's what we gave Adam, excellent. Now we have to be aware that cash could trigger taxable event. Simply put, as a result, if you received more than your basis, you could have a taxable event. Why? Because it's cash cash. So let's take a look at what we are doing here. The first thing is, what's the gain or the loss that Adam should recognize? Well, let's see. Adam's basis is 11,500. Okay. Now we have to remember that the partnership removed, basically released the $6,000 of debt. When that happens, this debt is one third to Adam, one third to Lily, one third to Avi. Remember, those are equal partners. Therefore, what's going to happen as soon as as soon as that that debt is gone, we have to reduce 
Adam's basis, it's 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 as we gave Adam two thousand dollar in cash, as if we did that. So the first thing is, if there's any liability being removed, we have to reduce this liability. Therefore, the adjusted basis of Adams is nine thousand five hundred. Now look, Adam received ten thousand dollar in cash. So ten thousand dollar. Remember, this is important. This is cash minus nine thousand five hundred in basis. Adams ha will have. $500 and that $500 guess what it, it's a gain it's a gain if we have a loss we don't recognize the loss but it's a gain and is it a taxable gain actually it is it is taxable it is taxable because it's in form of in form of a gain so I have here negative 500 but it's really 500 so what I did is I took 11,500 reduced it by 2,000 gave a gave a basis of 9,500 then we have a 500 cash so this is i'm just going to multiply everything by negative one so no one is confused here just because of the formula in excel sheet it end up to be so i'm going to multiply it by negative one so it gives me 500 multiplied by negative one so simply put this is 500 gain 500 gain okay so this is and and remember adam received cash that's so kind of a, a, a special a special asset in a sense that it's taxable. Now, post-distribution uh, basis in the partnership interest. Well, what's the post-distribution basis? If we think about it, Adam started with eleven thousand five hundred. We reduced. We reduced the. We reduced it by two thousand when they relieved the debt. That's nine thousand five hundred. Then we gave Adam ten thousand of cash. Well, that gives us negative five hundred. Hold on a second. We cannot have negative basis. Therefore, the basis are actually zero. You cannot have negative basis. Therefore, the post-distribution basis for Adam is zero. The post-distribution is zero. You cannot have negative basis. Remember, Adam already recognized 500 of cash, which is taxable income. Therefore, the basis is zero. Basis in the property distributed, that should be easy. If we gave you $10,000 in cash, what is your basis in that $10,000 in cash? That should be the basis, $10,000 in cash, $10,000 in cash. That's easy because it's cash. You don't have to worry about fair market value or whatever. Cash is cash. If you have 10000 if we gave you 10000 that's your basis, 10000 So this is Adam. Now let's take a look at Lily. First, Lily received land. Land will have a different, it will be treated differently than, than, uh, than, uh, than the cash. Remember, the cash is special. The cash is special. Why? Because it is taxable. It, you'll have a gain if you receive the cash in access of your basis, and that's what happened here. So what happened here? It's a property distribution. The first thing you need to know is there's no gain. So simply put, you don't have to do any computation. You could put zero here. There's no gain on this. Now, if you really want to compute, if you really want to compute the gain, if you, if you really want to do that, uh, well, we're going to do it in a moment. You'll have to compare. So let's assume we're, we're going to compute the gain, but not, but not recognize it, just to kind of show you how it works. Remember, Lily, the basis is 17,500. 17,500. And remember, Lily, what's going to happen to Lily's basis, because Lily's taken over the debt, okay? She already have one-third of this debt included in her basis, so she, she's going to get the remaining two-third. The remaining two-third is 4,000, because remember, Adam's going to get rid of one-third that's going to go to Lily, and Avi's going to reduce their, their debt by one-third. It's going to go to Lily. One-third plus one-third equal to two-third. Therefore, Lily will increase her basis by $4,000. So Therefore, her adjusted basis is 21,500. Okay, and she's receiving something for 9000 There is no gain in the first place. But even if there's gain, remember, this is a property. We don't recognize a gain on it. Therefore, the gain is zero. The gain is zero. And it should be easy. Just put gain is zero. Post-distribution basis and the partnership interest. What is Lily's post-distribution basis? Well, Remember, we started with 17,400. We add the 4,000 because she's taken over the debt. And why do we only add 4,000? Because she already in her basis here, there is one third of that debt. Then we add the one, the two third of the other two partners. Therefore, we are up to 21,500. Then we gave Lily, then we gave Lily $9,000 of land. Therefore, we reduce it. We reduce the basis. We reduce the basis, but we reduce the 
land basis uh, to Lily's basis. And what we end up with is 12,500. And this will be Lily's, Lily's basis. 12,500. And here's the formula. And here's the note. Okay. Now, what is the basis in the distribution property. Simply put, what we're asking is now is what basis would Lily takes in the in the land? Well, the basis are transferred since you know since we have more basis interest partnership interest basis than the basis of the asset. Basically, we're gonna transfer the basis of the asset, which is nine thousand. So notice here the nine thousand will be the basis. Okay, let's look at the third scenario. Again, what I like about this is it's basically looking at all different scenarios. Avi. Avi's basis, pre-distribution 12,500. Avi received inventory, fair market value of 10, a basis, partnership basis of 11. First, what's the gain or the loss? Again, it's zero. It's zero. The gain or the loss is zero. What is the post-distribution basis in Avi's? So Avi, a post-distribution, what's their basis okay now again we have to go through some computation here to find out the basis uh, to find out the post distribution basis starting with 12,000 I'm sorry 12,500 again Avi will experience the same debt relief of 2,000 debt relief of 2,000 okay minus 2,000 which is the debt that Lily's taken over that's gonna be that's gonna be an adjusted basis of 10,000 10,500 then 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 notice what happened here then Avi received an inventory with a basis of 11,000 well minus 11,000 basis of 11,000 we have a now we have a negative can we have a negative can we have a negative can we have a negative basis? And the answer is no. Therefore, what's going to happen? We're going to have post-distribution basis is zero. We cannot have negative basis. So no gain is recognized. No gain is recognized. Okay? No gain is recognized. Technically, if you really think about it, uh, we're giving them something that's worth 11,000 basis. With, and they have partnership basis of 10,500. There's a gain, but we don't recognize the gain and we cannot have a negative basis. Therefore, it's zero. Now, what's the basis in the property? Now, here, there's a special rules we have to be aware of. And what's happening here? The basis in the property, notice the basis in the property, the basis in the property here is greater than the obvious basis, obvious basis, greater than the partner's basis. Okay? Under those circumstances, we're going to take the we're going to take the step down basis. The step down basis is Avi's basis, which is 10,500. Avi's basis, 10,500. Therefore, the inventory will have a basis to Avi of 10,500. Now, it's it's good to think about this. It's good to think about this. What happened if we give him, if we give Avi 11,000? Would Avi like it? Sure, Avi would prefer a basis of 5,000. Why? Because if he has a basis of 5,000, you know, his bases are, are higher. Therefore, when he sells this property, he's going to have lower taxes. But we give him lower basis, which is 10500 When he sells this property down the road, he's going to have a higher taxes. Therefore, the $500 here that we, can, we don't recognize basically is the third into here. So notice, so although... So although we gave him something for eleven thousand, has has a, a basis of eleven thousand, he's gonna have it as ten thousand five hundred because there are five thousand that Avi did not recognize. Now he would recognize later. When would he recognize later? When he sells the inventory. Remember, inventory is ordinary income. FYI, that's something you have to know uh, as a characteristic of the taxable income. And basically, again, I, I like this because it gives you. I like this exercise. For one thing, I received many, many. This is, I mean, many requests for individuals to explain this simulation for them. I mean, this simulation, you know, uh, you know, it's you, you would see it in many CPA review courses, something similar to it. Therefore, I, I just wanted to uh, have this have this recording so you'll have it easy easy 
for you, easy for everyone to remember this. Once again, at the end of this recording, I'm going to remind you that if you're studying for your CPA exam, to check out farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. So if you want, you know, keep it. I can't replace it, but I can be a useful addition. I can add knowledge. I can add explanation. That's what really a supplemental course does. If a supplemental course is testing you or giving you the same thing as your main course, it's not a supplemental course. It's a mini course. I'm a supplemental course. I'm different. Different in a sense that what I provide to you, it doesn't, does the, your main menu, your main CPA review course don't provide. And that's detailed explanation. Good luck. Study hard. Consider subscribing and stay safe.